Welcome to the show. I'm Andy Muirhead and of course this is Collectors, the show that celebrates the passion, the compulsion and occasionally the obsession that is collecting. To help us understand exactly how, why and what Australians are collecting today, we've got our panel of experts. And first to you, Nicole, we've got Australia's biggest collection of Snoopies on yeah, the show tonight. That's right, Andy. Now, everybody loves Snoopy, but it seems that Lisa Riday loves him a little bit more than most people. My husband pointed out that I actually am obsessed with Snoopy and I just thought it was an everyday lifestyle. And I'm taking you to the biggest collecting market in the world, the internet. All you need to do is type in the name of the item you're interested in, press search, and hey presto. And I'm going to show you the fascinating world of chairs. Look at the intricacy of all that carving. This is spot on 1850. All of that, plus I'll be putting the panel's skills to the test with a mystery object that they've never seen but I know everything about. To kick off the show, our auction hound Justin Murphy is on the line direct from Sydney and as always he's picked something special for the panel and for you at home to estimate the value of. So listen carefully to Uncle Justin because this is the only information you're going to get. Evening panel, will you have a look at this? It is absolutely beautiful. English, Victorian, made by Frederick Henry Ayres, one of the great rocking horse makers in the world. They don't come any better than this. Horsehair mane, tail, bridle, padded leather saddle, and it is completely original, it's been untouched. So there are a few dents and marks of great love and devotion by many, many children. And it has a beautiful rocking motion. Lot number 227, the rocking horse. Uh, start the bidding on this at $600. At $600 on bid, $600, $700, $700, $800 on now. At $800, is there any advance on $900? There you go, Justin's laid down the challenge and it's up to you guys now to bid on the rocking horse. All oh, right. Gordon, I want you to I'm bid first. first off the rank. Well, an Ayers rocking horse, they don't get better than this. This is the Rolls Royce of okay. rocking horses. I'm going to go to 1850. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Nicole? Well, I'd say 2200. Adrian, are they close? It was just over three foot high. Okay. Which is really quite small for a rocking horse. Two. Well, bigger ones go for more, okay. <laughs> strange to say. Mm. I'm going to go for 2,100. 2,100. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Gordon, 1850, mm -hmm. Nicole, 2,200, and 2,100 yeah. for Adrian. Well, bragging rights for the first show are up for grabs, so we'll cross back to Justin later with the final hammer price. <laughs> Every week we invite passionate collectors to come into the studio and show us their collection. And tonight we meet Australia's biggest Snoopy fan, Lisa Riday. Hi Lisa. Hi, how are you? Good. It's Australia's biggest collection of Snoopies, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Well, let's take a look at your whole collection. I started collecting Snoopy when I was 13 years old, where I got my first Snoopy from Hong Kong. Some people think I'm a bit crazy and a bit sick, but it's my passion and I really love it. We moved into this new house, which we built around the Snoopy room. My husband pointed out that I actually am obsessed with Snoopy and I just thought it was an everyday lifestyle. And they called it puppy love. He asked me to get married and when he asked me I said well I'll think about it if you get me a big fat Snoopy which is this one here and he did, and so I couldn't really say no. I love her so. Snippy was involved in my wedding quite a lot. He was on the wedding cars, and he was on the cake, and we had a five weeks honeymoon, and we travelled around the world searching for more Snoopy things. We had to even get married on a certain date, 
so we could go to the Beagle Fest in America where all the peanuts collectors get together and we sell and swap and talk about Snoopy and all the other characters. The most valuable Snoopy item I have is the Snoopy diamond ring, which my husband got the best man to go to Japan and buy the Snoopy ring. And he then added a diamond collar on Snoopy's neck. The, world according to Snoopy. the biggest collection in the world is about 60,000 objects but I have uh, 4,672 items and I'm hoping to get uh, close to it. Maybe, <laughs> I have to ask my husband. <laughs> Take Take me through that. How do you bring your potential husband home and, <laughs> and explain what happens there? He already knew about it and he really supports and encourages me and he never has a problem trying to find me a birthday or Christmas present. Exactly. <laughs> Very That's easy right. to please. Adrian, everybody in the world knows Snoopy. Why is that? Snoopy represents what it is to be a decent human being, struggling against the kind of currents of life. There's even a, a, a book... Oh, with... God, surely you can't intellectualise about flipping Snoopy now, can <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, Charles Schultz <laughs> wrote a book called The Gospel According... The Gospel According the... to Snoopy. No, Peanuts, oh. to be correct. <laughs> yeah, all right, and, all right, all right. And in that is, is a kind of model for living. Yeah. Mm. And he put it in the newspaper every day and, yeah. and you could relate. Yes. Yeah. At the beginning of the Vietnam War, Snoopy was seen to be fighting the Red Baron for the first time. And, and, and the First World War embodied the kind of just war as opposed to the Vietnam War. And right at the end of the Vietnam War, just as Nixon was withdrawing American troops from Vietnam, Snoopy has his last fight, as if to say, yes, we've, we've pulled out of that evil war. Lisa, I'm really interested in how you keep a track of so many items. How do you, I know that there are little numbers on here. How do you track them all? I enter them all in on a database on the computer oh, that's and fantastic. they're all numbered and I sort of classify them in like what they're made of, the materials they're made of, oh, plastic, great. wood, yeah. tin. Mm -hmm. I'm completely impressed. Yeah. <laughs> the book in front of us here, tell us about that. When I went to visit uh, Charles M. Schultz in his studio and I actually met him and oh, fantastic. Oh, fantastic. How exciting. He, he actually signed the book for me. Oh, you've got fantastic provenance, so probably worth about 500 bucks I would think. Well actually Charles M. Schultz gave it to me for free. Oh, <laughs> isn't that nice? You're well ahead. <laughs> How much have you spent on Snoopy? I spent uh, probably around about 10000 but to me it is actually priceless. I wouldn't sell my collection. <laughs> Thanks for coming in and sharing gee, a small part of your collection with us. Good luck in the future. Thank you. Now,